Lifestyle medicine is the use of lifestyle interventions directed at the treatment, management, and prevention of disease. Hey folks, I just want to take a minute to talk about salt and its effects on your body. Specifically, I want to talk about how it can raise your blood pressure by better understanding the effects of salt on your blood pressure. You might be better able to manage that aspect of your health moving forward. Before I get started, I just want to mention that salt has many roles in the human body, and I'm going to specifically focus on blood pressure in this lecture. Uh, in a nutshell, sodium, or Na+, is the molecular description, which I'll just refer to as salt, which includes sodium and chloride technically, um, helps your kidneys retain water. This serves a very essential function to our overall health and well-being. Uh, the salt circulating in our bloodstream and the rest of our body helps keep our circulatory system filled with blood and allows the heart to do its job of delivering oxygen around the body. When we exercise or when we sweat or when uh, the temperature goes up and we sweat because of that, we lose heat, water, and salt, among other things. And the sweat is important because it allows us to regulate our body temperature under those stressors. Uh, but the salt in your bloodstream actually helps keep the fluid there under these stressful conditions, keeping your blood pressure within a normal range despite the fluid loss from sweating. Obviously, over time, if you don't rehydrate, you will run into issues related to dehydration. And as just as an example, think of athletes or someone crossing the desert without any water. Uh, it is the job of your kidneys to regulate the amount of salt in your circulatory system. If the total salt goes up, your kidneys will filter more out. And if the total salt goes down, those filters will close and your body will try to retain salt. This affects your blood pressure directly because the water follows the salt, uh, if you will. And it does this through a physical process called osmosis. Osmosis is a process by which a fluid, which we'll call water in this case, spontaneously moves to an area of higher molecular concentration, or an area where there is more salt. In this picture, you see a beaker with a semi-permeable membrane that the pink stuff, which we'll call water, can penetrate. The purple dots, which we'll call salt, cannot penetrate that red line. In the first beaker, on the left side of that membrane, you only see seven molecules of salt. And on the right side, you see more like 20 or 25. Because of the concentration of salt is higher on the right, it will actually pull water through that membrane until both sides have the same concentration. In the right beaker, we see that most of the water is now on the right side of that semi-permeable membrane. Think of the salt as like forcing the ratio of water to salt to equilibrate or to become the same on both sides by pulling the water across. In the human body, if you have a higher salt concentration or retention in your circulatory system, more water will be retained. If you increase the salt filtering and excreting through your kidneys, water will follow it out and enter your bladder as urine. Osmosis itself is a conceptually difficult topic. If my oversimplified explanation doesn't make sense, I would encourage you to look it up on YouTube. Uh, there are several great videos that explain it more thoroughly. Now, everything I just explained here is the normal, healthy way that our body regulates salt. Uh, and just for what it's worth, there are a lot of other factors at play here, including different hormones, other electrolytes, other osmotically active agents in your blood, etc. But this is just a really simplified way to describe how salt and water are regulated by your kidneys. Unfortunately, the process is not perfect and things can go wrong. This can occur because of too much salt intake, because of the heart problems that makes it sensitive to fluid overload, and because of kidney problems that cause the filter to not work properly. In all these cases, you can end up with more sodium in your bloodstream, leading to more water retention and higher blood pressure. There is, this is one cause of the disease process known as hypertension, of which there are many. According to the American Heart Association, we require about 1,500 milligrams of salt per day. As Americans, we consume about 3,400 milligrams per day, more than twice what we need. And furthermore, about 75% of that salt comes from uh, processed foods and restaurant food, and less than a quarter comes from what we actually add ourselves. And it's also worth noting that some people are more sensitive to salt uh, than others. So if you have no heart or kidney problems, you're most likely able to filter out that excess salt. However, if you do have heart or kidney issues, or you're just sensitive to it, and the excess salt can start causing problems and potentially damage some of your organ systems. In your kidneys, it can continue to damage them, leading to inability to filter your blood and all the various molecules in it. This can lead to a buildup of toxic products in your bloodstream. The elevated blood pressure can stiffen your arteries, causing the walls to become thicker and stronger, and the artery itself can become narrower. This is a compensatory mechanism, but not necessarily a good one, and over time, those thickened blood vessels can increase the risk of blood clots, heart attacks, and strokes. It can also damage your heart, one way it does this is make your heart pump harder against the elevated blood pressure, causing it to enlarge. It can also stress the coronary arteries of the heart, increasing your risk of heart attack. Uh, increased blood flow is also linked to arterial damage in the brain, and over time that can reduce blood flow, increasing the risk of uh, vascular dementia and stroke. 
And also, finally, elevated sodium is also associated with osteoporosis, stomach cancer, kidney stones, and headaches. So in conclusion, just a few points here. Salt plays an important role in how our body manages our blood pressure. It does this through a physical process known as osmosis. The average American consumes more than twice their daily requirements of sodium. Over time, uh, this uh, elevated sodium can lead to hypertension, and chronic hypertension can, and high sodium can damage your heart, kidneys, blood vessels, and brain.